Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will be talking about how to present data using a cross tabulation. I will first show you how this is done by hand, and then I will show you how to get Excel to do this for us. So what is a cross tabulation? You may have heard the term cross tabulation, or you may have heard it referred to as a cross classification table or a contingency table. These are all different ways of referring to a table that shows the responses of two variables. Here is a simple cross tabulation of 30 people who were asked what their choice of entree was at their last restaurant meal. They were also asked to write down their gender. We can see from the table the two variables are choice of entree and gender. We can also see that there are four choices of entree, beef, poultry, fish, and vegetarian. And this is a cross tabulation by gender, so we have male and we have female. Take a look at the row totals and the column totals. These are the row totals and these are the column totals. We can see that the total number of people who ordered a beef entree is 16 out of a grand total number of 30. So 16 out of 30 people ordered a beef entree. We can also see that out of the 16 people who preferred beef, 12 of them were male and 4 of them were female. And from the 30 people sampled, 17 were male and 13 were female. The intersection of each row and column is called a cell. Let's say I want to know how many females preferred fish. I would look here in the column of females and the row of fish, and the intersection of female and fish is 2. So 2 out of the 30 people were females who preferred fish. We can look for patterns in the data more easily if we convert the numbers into a cross tabulation based on percentages. Here is how we would do that. On top here we have the original data as it was first presented as frequency counts in each cell. Below here we will construct an overall percentage cross tabulation. Let's first start with the row percentages. Since the first row has 16 people who ordered a beef entree, and that is out of a total of 30, we would say 16 divided by 30, or 53.33%. Next are the poultry entrees. There are eight people who ordered poultry. So 8 divided by 30 gives us 0.2667, or 26.67%. Next, we have the people who ordered a fish entree. Let's see what we have here. We have four people, four out of 30. So four divided by 30 gives us 0.1333, or 13.33%. And finally, we have those people who ordered a vegetarian meal. That would be 2 out of the 30. So 2 divided by 30 would give us 6.667%. All of these row percentages should add up to 100%. If we add up the percent of people who ordered a beef entree, plus the people who ordered a poultry entree, plus the people who ordered fish and vegetarian, we would take 53.33 plus 26.67 plus 13.33, plus 6.67, and it would add up to 100%. If it doesn't add up exactly to 100%, it's a rounding error. I kept things here to two decimal places, and it worked. It does add up to 100%. We can also look at the data in terms of column percentages. Here we have 17 out of 30 males and 13 out of 30 females. So 17 divided by 30 would give us the column percentage right over here. And let's see what that would be. 56.67. Actually, when we divide 17 by 30, you would get 0.5667. And then we would turn that into a percentage by multiplying it by 100 or moving the decimal to the right two spaces. We can also look at the column percentage by females. We have 13 females over here, 13 out of 30. 13 divided by 30 would give us 43.33%. And of course, if you take these two numbers, 43.33 and 56.67, and you add them up, 56 plus 43, you would get 100%. So both 
the row percentages and the column percentages have to add up, up to the grand total. The grand total is 30 out of 30. 30 divided by 30 would be 100%. So here we have the beginnings of a cross tabulation based on overall percentages. Now let's fill in the rest of the cells. You can see that there are still eight cells that need to be filled. Let's start with the first cell, the intersection of beef and male, right over here. So how many people were both male and ordered beef? If you go back to the original table, you will see that 12 males ordered beef. To turn that into an overall percentage, we divide 12 by 30 and we get 0.4 or 40%. 12 divided by 30, 12 males who ordered a beef entree divided by the grand total of 30 gives us 40 percent now let's do that for the males who ordered poultry then the males who ordered fish and then the males who ordered a vegetarian entree until we fill in all of the column percentages so how many males ordered poultry there were three males who ordered poultry three divided by 30 is 0.1 or 10 percent Next, we have two males ordering fish, so 2 divided by 30 is 0.0667, and that's 6.67%. And finally, we have the males who ordered a vegetarian entree, which were none, none, zero, divided by 30 is 0%. Now, take a look at each individual cell here, 40%, 10%, 6%, and you'll see that 40 plus 10 is 50 plus 6.67 would be 56.67%. And so that would be the column total for the males. And all of these should add up to 13.33 plus 16.67 plus 6.67 plus 6.67. If you add up down this column of females, you get 43.33%. And 56.67 plus 43.33 should add up to 100%. So down each column, everything adds up to the total and the totals for male and female add up to 100%. And the same works across the rows. If you add up 40% plus 13%, you get 53%, 53.33. If you add 10 plus 16.67, you get 26.67. If you add 6.67 and 6.67, you get 13.33. And 0 plus 6.67 gives you 6.67. And then if you add up this entire column here, which are the row totals, right, for beef, poultry, fish, and vegetarian, add them up, and you get 100%. So whether you go up and down or across, everything has to add up to the grand total of 100%. This table is an overall percentage distribution. Now we can take this overall percentage distribution and turn it into a row percentage distribution or a column percentage distribution, depending on how we want to look at the data. This table is an overall percentage distribution. Now we can take this overall percentage distribution and turn it into a row percentage distribution or a column percentage distribution as well. What you are looking at here is an overall percentage, and we got that by taking each of the cell counts and dividing it by the grand total of 30. Let's start over again with the original cross tabulation filled with count data. We see the grand total now is 30, and there are 17 males and 13 females. This is the original table. Well, let's suppose we want to know the percentage of beef entrees that were ordered by males. How would you calculate that? Well, the number of males who ordered beef entrees are 12, and the total number of beef entrees are 16, 12 for the males and 4 for the females. So the percentage of males who ordered a beef entree would be 12 out of 16. So we would take 12 divided by 16 and get 0.75 or 75 percent. So here we are saying that 75 percent of the beef entrees were ordered by males. Now understand that we are just looking at beef entrees when we calculate a row percentage because the row is beef entrees. So if 75 percent of the beef entrees were ordered by males, what percent of the beef entrees were ordered by females? Now think about this logically. 75% were ordered by males, right? So what number do you think would go here for the females? What percentage? And obviously, logically, it should be 
25%, right? Because if it's, this is a total of the beef entrees and 75% were ordered by the males, then we would expect that the percentage ordered by the females is 25%. So let's see if that works. <clears throat> 4 divided by 16 is 0.25, which is 25%. So yes, that works out. And we can do that for the rest of the table as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these cell numbers, 3 and 5, and divide by its row total. And the reason we're dividing by the row total is because this is a cross tabulation based on row percentages. We'll do this again in, in a couple of minutes as a column percentage, but right now we're looking across as rows and so it's a row percentage. So next would be the poultry, so that would be what? 3 out of 8. This would be 5 divided by 8. This would be 2 divided by 4, right? This would be 2 divided by 4 and this would be the table we would get, this is a cross tabulation based on row percentages. And here's what the table would look like in its final form. Uh, we get rid of the totals for the male column and totals for the female column, and now we're just looking at the table across each row. All right, let's see how this would work for column percentages. So how would we do that? Well, let's take a look at the first number in the first column, which is 12, and this time we're going to divide 12 by 17, which is the, the column total for the males. So 12 out of the 17 males ordered beef, and so that would be looking down each column and getting column percentages. 12 of the males ordered a beef entree, 12 out of how many? 12 out of 17, because there's 17 males, and so we take 12 divided by 17, and we get 0.7059 or 70.59%. Let's continue down the column and look at the percentages of males that ordered poultry entrees. That would be 3 out of the 17 males. So 3 divided by 17 would be 0.1765 or 17.65%. Let's continue to fill in the table by dividing each of the cell numbers by the column totals for the males and then for the females. And here is what the completed cross tabulation by column percentages would look like. We see that now the column percentages all add up to 100%. Remember, when we did the table using row percentages, then the rows added up to 100%. Now it is the columns that add up to 100%. So now you have three ways of taking the original cross-classification table or cross-tabulation table and presenting it as a percentage. You can present it as an overall percentage cross-tabulation where you take each cell count and divide by the grand total, which in this case was 30, or you can create a row percentage cross-tabulation by taking each cell count and dividing it by the total in each row, or you can create a column percentage cross tabulation by taking each cell count and dividing it by the total in each column. So we have an overall percentage, we have row percentages, and we have column percentages. Let's see how we can use Excel's pivot table tool to create a cross tabulation. Here are the steps which I will demonstrate in a minute, but you might want to pause this video and copy down the steps first and then follow along as I demonstrate. All right, I have open here an Excel spreadsheet where I have the entrees ordered and I have the gender by male or female, so it's M and F for male and female, and beef, poultry, fish all the way down. I want to see if I can scroll here. You can scroll, okay, all the way down to... 30, 30 customers. Okay, so let's see how this is done. Let's first select all these cells. Okay, and then we go up here to where it says insert. We click on insert. We click, click on pivot table. Click OK. And now we have here the entree ordered and the gender. Now we have the entree ordered as the rows, so I'm going to take that and drag it down to the rows. I have the gender as the columns, so I'm going to drag that down here to the columns. And then we're going to have the customers as the values. 
And now we click on the sum of the customer, click on value field settings, and we don't want the sum, we want to change that to count. And then we click OK. And that's all there is to it. This is a little messy here, so what I would do is format the cells better. Well, how would I do that? You select this column. Now right click so the options come up and the option for format cells is here. And then I would change that alignment to be centered. Click OK. And now you can see this was moved over and centered. I'm going to do that for column C also. Let's center that. Format. Center. Center. Click OK. And we could move that over so that it's a little bit wider. There we go. And you can play around with this and, and uh, make it look nicer, but there's your basic cross-tabulation table. You have the rows and you have the columns. One important issue that comes up from time to time with cross-tabulations is something called Simpson's Paradox. And this comes up when we deal with what is, what is called aggregated data. Aggregated data is a combination of data from other cross-tabulations or other data that is put into a nice, neat table. And the problem is that sometimes when we aggregate data, we see relationships or trends that we didn't see in the original separate cross-tabulations. And the reverse is true as well. Sometimes we see relationships in the unaggregated data that we don't see when we aggregate the information. What that means for us is that when we see patterns or trends in data, we need to realize that these trends may not hold true when we look at the data from a different perspective. Let's take a look at an example of Simpson's paradox. A very good example of Simpson's paradox involves the batting averages of players in professional baseball. It's possible for one player to have a higher batting average than another player during a given year, and again in the following year, but to have a lower batting average when the two years are combined. In this cross tabulation, we can see the unaggregated data on the left side for Derek Jeter and for David Justice. In both 1995 and 1996, David Justice had a higher batting average than Derek Jeter. He had uh, 0.253 and 3, 0.321, and you can see those numbers are higher than Derek Jeter's. So both years we see that David Justice had a higher batting average. Now suppose we aggregate or combine the data from the two years and compile a batting average for those two years together. When we do that you can see the combined column shows Derek Jeter's batting average as higher than David Justice, 0.31 compared with 0.27. This is a great example of when data is looked at one way, broken down, and then the very same data is looked at in a combined or aggregated way, the results are different. Why does this happen? Well, the answer is different for different situations, so you have to look at the original data more closely to understand why this happened. In this particular case, it looks like there's a big difference between the years in the at-bats. Derek Jeter had only 48 at-bats in his rookie year and 582 at-bats the following year. That's a huge difference. David Justice also had a large difference in his at-bats between 1995 and 1996. So when the data is looked at year by year, David Justice comes out on top. But when the data is combined, then we get a different result. And this phenomenon is called Simpson's Paradox. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on cross-classifications, otherwise known as cross-tabulations. Be sure to explore more ways to present data, including scatter diagrams, trend lines, and various bar charts. All of these can be constructed by hand, but can also be created using Excel and other statistical or graphical software. So have fun, learn something, and be creative.